In the last video, we explored the flight to one of the most remote corners of our planet. In this one, let's see what there is to do there. This is the secret of the South Atlantic. St. Helena is home to epic history, out of this world scenery, and incredible opportunities for intrepid travelers. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm in St. Helena, and I'm excited to share a little bit more about this island with you, something a little different. I make videos here on YouTube about airlines, but perhaps the most amazing part of aviation are the places it can take us. So in this video, I'm gonna try a little experiment. Let's check out some of the things on the ground here. We'll explore some highlights of the island and a little bit of what I enjoyed while I was here. Let me know what you think about this experiment by leaving comments. I always appreciate feedback. And next week, I'll post a more typical video about my return to the mainland. St. Helena is located in the middle of the South Atlantic Ocean. First discovered by the Portuguese in 1502, they used it to resupply their trading and exploration expeditions. It then became a critical component of the success of the British East India Company before it turned into a prison for one of the world's most infamous megalomaniacs, Napoleon. Like most visitors, I stayed in the capital, Jamestown. It's located inside a valley left over from the island's volcanic birth. It's one of the few places accessible from the sea. It's also where I stayed for my three nights on the island. Not nearly enough. I really wish I'd stuck around for a full week. There's several hotels and hostels here in town, along with several restaurants and shops. Make reservations early, though. With the addition of the airport, tourism is on the rise. St. Helena, along with its not-so-nearby neighboring islands of Ascension, 800 miles away, and Tristan de Cunha, 1,500 miles away, is a British overseas territory with a population of about 4,500 so-called saints. It's Britain's second-oldest overseas territory after Bermuda. Everybody is incredibly friendly here. I think that's the biggest takeaway so far from St. Helena in general, but Jamestown in specific. Everybody is so warm and welcoming. If you like travel and aviation, please click the subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you can be among the first to know when I post a new video. This is the world famous Jacob's Ladder, located right in town. It's the number one must do activity on St. Helena, so I waited for a day with better weather and gave it a try. Okay, so before coming here to St. Helena, I knew uh, three things. First of all, Napoleon died here. Second, the people are incredibly nice. And third, there's this giant staircase called Jacob's Ladder that you absolutely have to climb. So I'm about to do that. I'll try to give you reports as I make it up the 699 steps that there are to come. The ladder was originally designed as a means for hauling cargo up to the fort above Jamestown. I was glad to merely have an iPhone and a bottle of water with me. The fastest time is like five minutes. I believe slow and steady wins the race. The views just kept getting better. I'm not really sure how to demonstrate this. These are not normal steps. These are like steep and taller. It's a great view of Jamestown, but I'm sure, I'm sure we can do better. I still have, uh, <laughs> still have more to, more to go. So, um, look, you might think I'm sitting down because I'm tired. I'm not. I want to be real clear about this point. I'm not tired. Uh, just wanted to get out of the wind so that the audio was better for you. I'm sitting down for you, not for me. I, look, I'd be done with this and I'd probably be near the record. I wouldn't break it at five minutes and change. Um, but I wanted to make this video for you. That's why I'm taking this nice and slow. They said not to do this at the, at the height to wait till the sun was down a little bit more, but uh, I wanted to get it done. About halfway up the 699 steps, the sun finally fell behind the ridgeline. Is St. Helena appealing to you, like based on what you've seen so far? Do you want to come here? Let me know uh, in the comments below if this was either already on your list or is now. But there was still more climbing to do. So I climbed. And I climbed, and the views kept improving, and I kept climbing, and some kids ran past me. I think I kind of blacked out. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> okay. And I kept climbing. <sighs> when I'm editing this, that will look much closer than it does right now. <sighs> And I got closer, and I kept climbing, and I got closer, and then... I 
I made. Oh, my legs feel like jelly. The worst part is you get a certificate if you come all the way up here. Well, you have to pay for it, two pounds, you have to pay for it. Um, you get it at the museum. Problem is, the museum just closed. And it's not open tomorrow, which is when I leave, so no certificate for me. Uh, so anyway, it's time to look at the view, take that in. Let me, let me share that with you now. down this thing it's like even more intimidating Six ninety-eight, six ninety-nine. that is done I started at uh, 403 it's now 445 the record was uh, five minutes <laughs> It took me 40, nearly 45 to go up and down. To be fair, up and down. I'll have to look at the timestamps in the videos to tell you how long it took me to, to go up. So I'm no, no record setter. And uh, there is the museum where I could get the certificate if it weren't closed, which it is. So that's it. You'll have to just trust me that I did it. But I guess you saw it. So anyway, that's quite an adventure. Something that you gotta do here in St. Helena. One of the friendliest places on the planet. But there's been at least one man in history who disagreed. St. Helena may be best known as the last home to exiled former French Emperor Napoleon. He stayed in Jamestown only one night before moving deeper into the island. His first home was a sort of gazebo or party house called the Briars. The original owners liked to host parties, but I suppose they wanted to be able to slip away from their guests so the party room was set outside in an outbuilding. Napoleon rode by on his horse, was impressed with the view, and asked to stay. The owner, probably fighting back a bit of shock and maybe a little disappointment, said, sure thing. From Briars, Napoleon moved to his permanent home, Longwood House, which wasn't so much a house, but a converted barn, which Napoleon, a former emperor who considered himself not so former, took as an affront the museum inside is pretty spectacular with loads of original furniture, but you'll have to take my word for it since photography wasn't really allowed. Napoleon absolutely despised living here. Understandably, who wants to go to prison? And that's exactly what it was for him. He was confined to this part of the island unless he was escorted by a British officer. And no ships could leave the island until a British sentry laid eyes on Napoleon. For a while, he enjoyed epic games of hide-and-go-seek which had real consequences for the ships trying to leave the harbor. Today, both the Briars and Longwood House are possessions of the French government. The island is home to a French consul whose responsibility it is to maintain these properties. And speaking of government representatives, the governor of St. Helena, Ascension, and Tristan de Cuna lives at Plantation House, along with the world's oldest living land animal, Jonathan, a giant tortoise born in the Seychelles who, at age 50 in 1882, was brought here. Today, Jonathan is 188 years young. There's even more to St. Helena, and that's its remarkable scenery. Perhaps the best way to see it is on foot. So I decided to head out for a hike. Should have probably planned better. The wrong shoes left me slipping all over the trail. Hiking in St. Helena is no joke, but completely worth it. The scenery was practically otherworldly. Come fit if you're coming to St. Helena. The island has 21 post box walks designed by the Nature Conservation Group here. At the end of each of these hikes is a post box that holds a notebook to write your comments and a stamp that you can use as a souvenir. My final day yielded some absolutely beautiful weather, which meant an opportunity to take a drive around the island. This really is a diverse place. It's incredibly beautiful, and there's something for everyone here. This is a really cool place. Thanks for indulging me this experiment of making a new kind of video. Um, if you think I should uh, keep doing this, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll start a new channel. I'd love your thoughts on that, just something different, kind of to switch things up. Between now and the next time, see in the sky. Or maybe on the ground if I do this, but let me know in the comments, thanks.